Hi everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about the introduction of CMOS combinational and sequential logic circuit design. In the latest VLSI syllabus for the BTEC third year students, this concept has been introduced, which was brought from the MTEC. CMOS combinational and sequential logic circuit design. What do you mean by combinational logic circuit and sequential logic circuit? We know the basic difference between combinational and sequential logic circuit design. Combinational is nothing but which depends on the circuit depends on present inputs only. Okay, so the combinational logic circuit, any logical circuit that depends on only present uh, logic inputs, so that means 1100 like that. That depends on that is known as combination logic circuit <coughs> whereas sequential logic circuit means it depends on depends on present inputs present inputs and past outputs present inputs and past outputs okay so sequential logic circuit which depends upon the present inputs present combination of inputs and as well as past outputs so in order to store the past outputs we need a memory okay so sequential logic circuits need a memory to store the past outputs okay so we can say simply wherever we are having the memory element that type of logic circuits comes under sequential logic circuits okay if we don't have any memory which works simply based on the present combination of inputs we can say they are combination logic circuits okay if you see the examples of this combination logic circuit examples of combination logic circuits we can say gates logic gates all logic gates comes under combination logic circuits next multiplexers decoders encoders so all these logic circuits full adders comes under combination logic circuits because they don't have any memory element and now examples of sequential logic circuits sequential logic circuits involves memory so we can say flip flops as example registers register is also a group of flip flops and even counters because counting operation needs memory to count the past value so all these are the examples of sequential logic circuits so now in this particular concept uh, like a cmos combination and sequential logic circuit design we are going to design the logical circuits for the combination and as well as sequential in two different ways one is static cmos design static CMOS design and the second one is dynamic CMOS design static CMOS design and dynamic CMOS design what is the difference between these two static and dynamic suppose for example if I say for example I am saying a full ladder. Full ladder. What do you mean by full ladder? Full ladder is used to add three input, three bits like A, B, and C. In. It adds three input bits and gives two outputs like sum and carry. Sum and carry out. Okay. Suppose if I say this particular full ladder whether it is a static CMOS design or dynamic CMOS design that completely depending upon the type of input we are applying okay so any type of logical circuit that can be described as a static CMOS or dynamic CMOS design that completely depends upon the type of input we are giving okay static input and dynamic input what do you mean by static input and dynamic input if any logical circuit if any logical circuit implemented in the CMOS design is having a constant or consistent input until we change then that is known as a static input static CMOS design the same logic circuit is having the change in the input continuously change input then 
that circuit is known as dynamic CMOS design. Okay, so static and static and dynamic are based on the input to the logic circuit based on the input to the logic circuit so static input means static input means constant input constant input that means the user has to change user has to change the input until we change intentionally the input will be in the same duration for long time okay next dynamic input dynamic input means without our intention the signal is continuously changing okay so dynamic input we can say variable input variable input for example clock we can say for example clock signal a clock signal is a dynamic input where it changes continuously with respect to it changes continuously with respect to time okay suppose i am going to give two circuits just imagine which one just guess which comes into which circuit design so we know this is the basic CMOS circuit CMOS inverter with input A and output A bar VDD here I am taking ground okay this is one circuit and another circuit I am taking is output input a it is a bar now see additionally we are having two transistors which is a pmos transistor here taking clock bar and nmos transistor taking clock which is a composite uh, positive of the NMOS and PMOS. Now here it is VTD. See, so the same circuit is having two additional transistors. One is a PMOS transistor in the pull up design and NMOS transistor in the pull down design. So the PMOS transistor is applied with a clock input which has opposite clock of the NMOS transistor. Both are inversely proportional. That means if one is say one, another one is zero like that. So, as long as this clock is continuously applied, this circuit comes under a dynamic CMOS circuit design. Okay. So, this is the example of dynamic CMOS design because the circuit is operated with clock. The circuit is operated with clock, continuously changing the input. Okay. That means a dynamic CMOS circuit examples we can say domino logic, dynamic logic because they are having clock signal in the input and this is simply a static CMOS circuit static CMOS logic circuit design which does not involve any type of clock signal okay this is the basic difference between static CMOS and dynamic CMOS circuit design first let us start with static CMOS circuit design what are the types of static CMOS circuit So what I said, static CMOS circuit design consisting of static inputs, consistent inputs until we user intentionally change, they are in the same state. That's why the circuit is known as static CMOS circuit design. This is the most widely used logic type in static complementary CMOS. So most of the times we are using this static CMOS circuit instead of the dynamic CMOS circuit because it is easy and 
does not depend upon the clock signal it continuously completely depending upon the only input signal present combination of input signals the static CMOS circuit style is really an extension of the static CMOS inverter to multiple inputs so in the view we can say the primary advantage of CMOS structure is robustness I will write here the most widely used most widely used logic style is static CMOS design so the static CMOS style is really static CMOS logic style is really an extension of the static CMOS inverter inverter we have just shown you in the previous slide the same circuit is extended with multiple inputs to give any type of logical function okay basically we have seen CMOS inverter which is a static circuit design now the same circuit is extended with multiple inputs to provide different logical functions that is the that is the meaning of this line what I am writing the static CMOS circuit logic style is really an extension of the CMOS uh, static CMOS inverter with uh, multiple inputs multiple inputs so we if this static CMOS circuit is having some advantages like uh, robustness good performance and low power consumption with no static power dissipation the primary advantage of the CMOS structure is robustness good performance and low power consumption low power consumption these are the main advantages of your static CMOS circuit design why we are using this instead of other designs so most of these properties are carried out over a large fan in logic gates implemented using a simple circuit or similar circuit topology okay all these are the important properties so why over a large fan in fan in is nothing but suppose if you are taking it is having has large fan in What do you mean by fan in and fan out? Fan in is nothing but the number of inputs that your gate can handle. Okay, suppose if you are taking a, any logic, I am taking a CMOS logic circuit. This CMOS logic circuit, here I am connecting n number of inputs. Okay, it is not limited to any 10 inputs or 20 inputs any number of inputs that it can handle this is the reason why it is known as fan in fan in is nothing but the number of inputs that a circuit can handle fan out we know fan out is nothing but the number of outputs that a circuit can drive okay so the fan in is also more for your SEMA circuit design okay so similarly we are having the complementary SEMA circuit style falls under the broad class of logic gates called static circuits in which at each and every point in time each gate output is connected to either VDD or VSS via a low resistance path. So in the SEMA circuit design the circuit is generally designed in a such a way that SEMA circuit 
is designed in such a way VDD and VSS are there on top and bottom of SEMA circuit respectively. Okay, so top side we are having VDD and bottom we are having VSS. In between these two, the CMOS logic circuit is always used to be constructed. So also the outputs of the gates assume at all times the values of the Boolean function, any type of Boolean function that can be implemented using this CMOS logic circuit. So this is the contrast to the dynamic circuit design which relies on temporary storage of signal values on the capacitance of high impedance circuit nodes. So wherever we are having the memory elements and capacitance and storage elements such things comes under dynamic SEMA circuit design or we can say sequential logic circuit design. Okay, we can say that means the sequential logic circuit design is nothing but a dynamic SEMA circuit design. Combination logic circuit is nothing but static SEMA circuit design. In that way this can be classified. Okay. So, static SEMA circuit designs are mainly classified into is classified into three categories. Three categories. First one complementary CMOS complementary CMOS and second one ratioed logic ratioed logic and third one pass transistor logic pass transistor logic these are the three different logic styles that comes under Static SEMA circuit design. Complementary SEMA circuit design. Ratio logic is nothing but either pseudo NMOS design or differential cascode voltage swing logic. Differential cascode voltage swing logic DC VSL or fast transistor logic. Okay, so in the next video, I will explain all these one by one. Thank you.